Hello, I'm William Zarbi. I'm the chair of cardiology here at Houston Methodist and Methodist DeBakey Heart and Vascular Center. It's a pleasure to have with me today Dr. Martha Gulati. She's the chair of cardiology at the University of uh, Arizona in Phoenix and just gave an amazing grand rounds on <laughs> women and heart disease and the need for cardiovascular specialized care, I think, for women and increasing awareness. Uh, so I w actually, I would like to invite you to take a look at these grand rounds because I thought it was inspiring. It was uh, uh, revealing in so many aspects that I think the public is not as aware of some of the differences between uh, cardiovascular risk and outcome between men and women. So you shared with us that the incidence of cardiovascular disease and bad outcome is almost 10 times more than uh, breast cancer, if you will. How can we increase this awareness? Even the physicians, I think, are not as aware. And how about the public? <laughs> yeah, I think it starts, obviously, in both places, because I think our physicians need to know that and the public definitely needs to know in order to address that and talk about that with their physicians. I think when most people, when most women go to the doctor, you know, they're usually, they rely on the physician to tell them what they need to get screened and what they need to get done. And I think for that reason, if we empower women to ask their doctor, is my heart okay? That they would get a better answer. Am I at risk for heart disease? Because I heard that's the number one killer. And I think when you put it in a numbers terms, that you know, that there, you know, you're ten times more likely to die of heart disease than you are from breast cancer. I th hope that means something. I mean, how do you think we can disseminate it more? And uh, understand, obviously, the American Heart Association concentrates on heart. And, uh, and, and men and women both. But I think the relative risk, since we talk always about relative risk, still needs to be emphasized, not to minimize yeah. you know, cancer and ovarian cancer and everything that is more women specific. But um, I think with that conceivably, we could have much more funding, which is needed. Yes, you, you, you asked, uh, you, you mentioned that. And, and more awareness for women to take care of themselves and uh, their physicians taking care of them too. Yeah, I definitely think that the um, awareness is a big issue that if you tell, if you see the pink ribbon, everyone knows what the pink ribbon is. And they also know if anything's painted pink, it probably is associated with breast cancer. What I think for heart disease, I think we need a new public awareness campaign. I actually think we shouldn't always stick with something just because that's what we did. I actually think it's time for the American Heart Association and the American College oh, yeah. of Cardiology to critically look at, you know, have we been as effective and how are we going to change? If we're, we're sort of plateaued, that's what our data says, is that we've educated women to the point where about 50% of women get it, but the other 50% don't. And particularly minorities, we haven't done a great job in that group either. They have worse awareness about heart disease, and we need that to improve. So do we need to change our logo? Do we, is a red dress enough? Do women connect with that? Or is a heart that re symbolizes your physiologic heart a better symbol or something else? We, ha we have great marketing people out there. We should be actually asking them what would help improve awareness because I think it starts there and it isn't to minimize like you said of, yes. of breast cancer but if breast cancer we should learn from them because they have made women very aware and made women go for their mammograms we have not gotten women to yeah. the point where they're asking am I safe is my heart safe is the number one killer something I need to the worry data about data you showed on uh, pre um, term uh, preterm physiology or, or the effect on it long term is amazing actually. And I, I like the way you, you put it as a stress test basically for women at that time. Do we know anything about the pathophysiology? Is just a herald, uh, heralding the in, in, in issue down the line or, or is there something about pregnancy that um, turns on some ultimately adverse effects? Do we know anything about the pathophysiology of this? Well, the reason that we 
we talk about pregnancy as a free stress test or nature's free stress test is that during pregnancy, we get two things. Pregnancy is an inflammatory response. So there is inflammation going on. And a normal response in pregnancy is really to be almost the vasodilator of the world. If you don't vasodilate, mm -hmm. then you end up having have complications. Stomach. And so we, there's a lot of theories that not, we don't have enough data, but we think that there's either an abnormal endothelial response that is pronounced during pregnancy that's predicting future cardiovascular risk. The other issue is there's a huge, you know, increase in, in blood volume. And so the heart has to work harder. And so there's also a theory that if the heart can't do exactly what it's supposed to do, maybe that's what we're seeing at that point. But Right now, I think these things are all coming to light. So I think we need more research. But I do think that um, we're probably seeing some sort of vascular response abnormality for those people who have abnormal events, whether it's um, hypertension during pregnancy or whether it's preterm deliveries. That's some sort of signal that something vascular is abnormal at that point. I like the editorial that you mentioned, you just written in circulation as to how you look at risk in addition to the risk calculator that you have. Your thoughts on calcium scoring, since there is a significant element, I think, maybe of that microvascular disease, that is, is calcium scoring uh, or the CT scan as effective, you think, in, in women compared to men? I think How do you see it in your practice, let's say, in, in addition to the data? Yeah, it depends. I, I, I would say it's useful in some, and, and there's a lot of data on men and women that coronary calcium abnormalities can predict future cardiovascular risk or enhance whatever our traditional risk score is if they have calcium in their coronary arteries. On the other hand, if they don't, they definitely have a lower risk, and I think it's useful, and I do use it, yeah, particularly yeah. in the patients who ha have a very strong family history or abnormal cholesterol levels. Despite the abnormal cholesterol level, a lot of these women will come out as low risk in the uh, traditional ASCVD risk calculator. Yet, if I find calcium, I can convince them easily to take a statin. It's yeah. at least evidence that there's something going on. For women that we're, um, specifically interested in that they're having symptoms of angina and don't have obstructive coronary disease, that would not be a group that I'm specifically interested in using um, the MESA risk calculator or coronary calcium scoring. And the reason is they're symptomatic and all these, these risk calculators are supposed to be for asymptomatic people. Once you're symptomatic, I think you, you step over that line and you have to find different ways of teasing out what's going on. If you really believe those symptoms, then we need to figure out the right tests. I think cardiac MRIs proving promising, PET scanning is proving promising, and I think that that's the direction I go, and in addition to risk assessment. Yes. We talked about awareness. We talked in your grand house, we're gonna revisit it, the, the important role of the obstetrician gynecologist taking care of women because they, they are their primary care uh, giver, yeah. if you will, to have cardiovascular disease on the radar screen. Uh, what should we be looking on the horizon from a science point of view? Are there some trials uh, that you know that targeting you know women in general just to understand more about pathophysiology? Is there something coming up that we need to keep on the lookout? Well, I think that we should keep looking for data from the WISE study, the Women Ischemic Syndrome Evaluation Study, because I think that that is going to continue to do trials to try to figure out what medications should be working in women who have the sort of non-obstructive coronary disease, but they have ischemia. I think we should also be looking for um, data collection. Right now, I think we're at the data collection point, not really the a trial point of trying to figure out if we're through looking at women who have had these adverse pregnancy outcomes, who is actually the highest risk what, and what is the best intervention. And I think hopefully in the future we start doing trials of intervention on these women. Maybe there's a different risk calculator for women yes. who have these adverse pregnancy outcomes. Well, this is very exciting and I think very informative, I think, to 
all of us and to our audience. Uh, Martha, it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you. And, and giving grand rounds with us. So My pleasure. look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. That's great. <laughs>